What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more J-Drama score, and I'm actually going to start reacting to music from a show I haven't uh, reacted to yet, though I have talked about a little bit. Um, you know, I've described a couple shows in recent times as being neo-noir, uh, and while those descriptions were accurate, this is the real deal. Like, if any other show in the history of humanity was going to be called neo-noir, this would have to be the one. Um, it's dark, it's gritty, it's crazy in terms of the narrative plot developments, it's it's the best looking show I've ever seen in my life. Not only is the cinematogra cinematography just great in general, but like, I mean they really put an effort into the visual aesthetic. I mean there's like lingering shots of like a neon sign like light coming through rain hitting the side of someone's face as he smokes a cigarette. Like. Every shot just has this, um, again, neo-noir, like, vivid quality to it. It's unbelievable. The music, the acting, the writing, the directing, the editing. It's just, honestly, it's a contender for my favorite show ever. I mentioned, you know, there's a few J-dramas that I put in that category. Um, there's four of them in particular that I've been talking about recently. Angels and Demons started reacting to that. Ouroboros uh, started reacting to that. Or the soundtracks, I mean. Um... So yeah, Mozu is one of those uh, four, along with Crisis. I did react to, um, I think, just one tune from Crisis so far. Um, but bottom line, like, of all of them, this is, I think, the highest quality in terms of, like, you know, the amount of um, planning, the, the high-quality um, contributors, not just the actors, but the, you know, the set dressers, and again, the cinematographer, the director, and so on. It's just a really, really high-quality show. Um, fullest possible endorsement I can possibly give. And again, if Crisis and Ouroboros are neo-noir, then this is like neo-noir, like, on ex exponents. Like, it's it's just an, on another level. It is, again, as neo-noir as any show could be. So, um, yeah, it stars a few of uh, my favorite uh, actors and actresses, as a number of other shows that I've talked about have. Um, yeah, there's two seasons. I would argue they're both fantastic. Season one is like perfect. I mean, it's it's literally it's perfect. Like it just there's, it. I mean, it's it's a it's a journey with a lot of suffering and loss along the way. Um, but yeah, it's perfect. Season two is fantastic. I really really enjoy it. Um, I just felt like when I first started watching it, that like why is there season two? Like season one, it like we everything it ended. Like we figured it all out. But it turns out it was always planned. Uh, I think this relates to, I don't know the original source material, maybe it's a manga, I'm not sure. But the name Mozu is the Japanese word for a shrike, and if you know what a shrike is, it's a type of bird um, that is sort of famous in behavioral, <clears throat> you know, like ornithology circles, because it catches its prey, and then most of the time it impales its prey on something before it eats it. like whether it's a pointed stick that's, you know, just on a log somewhere, or a barbed wire fence, or just a chain link fence. Basically, these birds catch their prey, whether it's another, like, smaller bird, or an insect, or a lizard, and then they, like, fly them with their beak onto, like, a pointed object. Um, and, you know, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but that is relevant, and I was looking at the, the soundtrack here, um, now, it's all written in Japanese kanji, but again, I was able to find the translations online. All of the title names are relevant to some theme, some concept, some element in the story. Like, I was really impressed with, like, everyone. It's like, oh, man, I get why they called it that. Oh, man, I get why they called that track that. Um, so, yeah, it's a brilliant show. Um, in particular, Season 1, though I don't want to, like, undersell Season 2. Season 2 is just fan it's fantastic. I just, like, when I learned of its existence... Um, it was sort of like, wait, I'm, I'm a little confused. Now, I should have known, uh, because in season one, it, like, it calls it season one. There are some shows where they do a, sh a season, and then, like, that's supposed to be it, but it's so popular they come back for a season two. This was apparently always planned to be two seasons, but I maintain that if you just end it after season one, it's flawless. It's, it's perfect, it's done, you don't need to do anything more. But season two is also very cool, and it admittedly does give you a little bit more explanation on some things that are not left hanging, but like left a little bit opaque at the end of the first one. So the season season two is fantastic, but um, again, season one to me is where it's all about, uh, and that was what this soundtrack is for. It's just for the season one, although um, I think most of the music in season two is the same. 
Regardless, uh, we're going to listen to uh, the opening tune, uh, which is called Mozu, um, which again, it just means shrike, it's a kind of bird. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a long piece, it's like maybe six minutes. It is both like cinematic orchestral, but also like energetic kind of like soundtrack score, meaning like in part of it there is technically a drum and bass rhythm. Don't be turned off, Ron, if you just heard that. Um, th there's enough there, I think you might still find interest. Uh, but yeah, it's sort of like, it's a piece with like two sort of atmospheres. One that is kind of like brooding and sort of, you know, a bit austere, almost like abstract. And then there's a more groovy part, and it kind of goes back and forth. But the whole time, the epic melody that is heard um, in a number of different pieces in the soundtrack, in slightly different manifestations, it sort of dominates the tune. So basically, this is a great introduction to the soundtrack overall. That obviously makes sense. It's the first track, and it's, um, you know, it's a, a theme, which again, you will hear in different iterations as we go through the soundtrack. So anyway, from Mozu Season 1, uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, um, this soundtrack is awesome because it actually gives like the credit and a picture of the guy and whatever. So the soundtrack was done by Kano Yugo. Um, so yeah, that's the composer and the music director for this soundtrack. So this is Kano Yugo uh, from the Mozu Season 1 soundtrack, and the track is just called Mozu.
that's the opening salvo uh, from this show's uh, season one soundtrack. Um, the alarm's still going. Uh, yeah, bottom line, that introduces the main motif. Um, now, there are pieces in the soundtrack that have no version of that, but again, there's like a half dozen more tunes along the way, including one called Mozu Strings, um, which articulate that theme um, in different idioms with different you know instruments and different tempos or um, sort of flavors in the moment. But that main theme, you will definitely hear multiple times. Um, I Once again, I cannot possibly give a higher recommendation for this show. I know I've said that about a few shows already, but really, this is like the highest quality in terms of like the production qualities and the amount of like time, effort, and care that went into making this show. I've never seen a show. Like people have said to me like, oh man, True Detective Season 1, it's so well done. I agree. It's a cool show. I, I like it a lot. Th it doesn't hold a candle to Mozu. I'm sorry. Like I love C True Detective Season 1, but... It doesn't hold a candle to Mozu. Um, <clears throat> so that's the kind of quality we're talking about, like, you know, HBO or better level quality of um, production. And I know it was, you know, there's a handful of Japanese shows that I'm familiar with. I already uh, reacted to a tune from Miss Sherlock. That one had a bit more international distribution than some other ones. This is another example. This one, it aired in some places. I think, like, um, you know, I, at some point, I think it aired in the U.S. if you had, like, you know, a certain cable channel or whatever. That's not the way I encountered it. But bottom line, I do know that this show got some international distribution. Uh, as I said, it has a second season. Also very, very, very good. Um, I really do like it. It's like a, a flat A. I'll give that a 95%. Season 1, I give like 100, 99%. Like, it's, you know, pretty much as perfect as any show can be. Um, they eventually made a movie which condenses what happens in season 1 to like one and a half hours. The movie's cool, but like, don't even bother. Like, just watch season 1, because you get the same story with a lot more detail, a lot more of a reasonable pace, um, you know, over the course of 10 episodes, the first of which is like a double episode, so it's sort of like 11 episodes. Um, so yeah, there is a movie, but I would just say check out season one and season two. Um, but yeah, bottom line, really cool soundtrack. Um, what is it? Kano Yugo? Is that the... I already forgot it. Um, yeah, Kano Yugo. Uh, shout out to Kano Yugo. We're going to hear more of his music as we go through this. But yeah, let me know what you think of this piece. I will see you next time. Peace.